Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Congress just leaked their backup strategy for stimulus, but to know what changed, so let me give you a quick recap of what the heck happened this week so we can understand why this is just classic, typical Congress. Anyway, this week was a big week. See, Nancy Pelosi passed her HEROES Act 228 days ago. And since then, Nancy Pelosi has spent that over seven months complaining about Republicans and demanding a massive package because anything the Republicans had was just too small of a package. She wanted $3.4 trillion, which she ended up compromising and settling for $2.2 trillion, but that was still too large for Republicans. When the White House stepped in to replace Mitch McConnell in negotiations with Nancy Pelosi, they got Treasury Secretary Mnuchin to offer $1.9 trillion. A pretty large package relative to, well, kind of what we're looking at today. But Nancy Pelosi said, no thanks, it's too small. Well, here we are a month and two days essentially after the election, and Joe Biden yesterday took credit for Nancy Pelosi announcing this week that she would be supportive of a $908 billion stimulus package, which... Just to compare that to the last package she saw, this is just 47% of the size. Well, Nancy Pelosi seems happy about this. Biden takes credit, saying, you know what, let's get a deal done now, and I'm not going to tell you what I did to negotiate, but I got it done. Is basically what he said yesterday in a press conference that was more like 30 to 40 minutes long. Anyway, Joe Biden calls this a down payment and implied that, you know what, don't worry about this, we're gonna get stimulus done in January again. Because if we don't, we'll be in a really dire situation and Republicans will cave in January. Don't worry. Well, that was said yesterday, right along the same time Joe Biden said that stimulus checks may still be in play and that he supports stimulus checks coming, saying that, look, we need rental aid, we need housing aid, landlord aid, food aid, stimulus checks, unemployment support. We need these elements of stimulus and they will come. In fact, in prior days this week, we've even heard Joe Biden say that he wants to go back to the $600 per week unemployment boost and that he might do that uh, in the event, you know, in January and February, the economy says we still need to provide that sort of support, which at this point with COVID cases doing what they are, we kind of expect that to happen. That is, of course, unless Donald Trump slam dunks some court cases and Biden doesn't actually become president. And now before I talk about the change, I just want to say that when we hear things like Bernie Sanders saying it's unacceptable that there are no stimulus pa checks in this package, keep in mind, that's actually not a good thing. The reason it's not a good thing for Bernie Sanders to say this is because of course Bernie Sanders wants stimulus checks. He's on the relative fringe of the left where he supports a lot of governmental support. I'm not saying that's good or bad, but in terms of negotiations, Republicans want to distance themselves from Bernie Sanders. Sanders. The last person we need saying let's add stimulus checks is Bernie Sanders because Republicans want to do the opposite of what Bernie Sanders wants to do. What we want are people like Nancy Pelosi, which I look, I, I know she's obviously on the left too, okay? But I would much prefer Nancy Pelosi and Biden saying we want stimulus checks because they are more moderate. <laughs> look, they might be left on certain things, but we know they are more moderate than Bernie Sanders. So all that fringe talk, not so important though. What's more important is getting four free stocks with Weeble when you deposit $100. Click the link, deposit $100, they give you four stocks worth between $21 and $1,600. It's at least 21 bucks, free money. Okay, so here's the big change. And this is kind of, a, kind of an eye roller, let's put it that way. This week, Congress has been telling us that we will pass something by December 11th. Fear not, December 11th is the drop dead deadline. We will either have a government shutdown and no stimulus package, or we'll have a stimulus package and a funded government but you'll have an answer by December 11th. You know what? We kind of like dates. We cherish dates, you know? We had a date to get stimulus done at the end of July. That didn't happen. We had a date to get stimulus done by the end of August, the end of September, right before the election. And I, 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 we kind of blew past literally all of those dates. And instead of actually getting any kind of real work done, Congress just said, hey, let's just kick the can down the road on the government spending bill to December 11th. But we got to get it done by December 11th because after all, if we want to quarantine from, you know, our, our family so we could be safe with our family by Christmas, you know, we need 14 days. So December 11th seems like a natural deadline. Let's make December 11th the deadline and then we can quarantine for 14 days and we can go hang out with our family on December 25th on Christmas. Well, the CDC came in and said, wait, we only need to quarantine for seven days now. So guess what the government and Congress has decided to do? Well, here's a quote from Bloomberg to tell you because I don't wanna be the one to word this. 
U.S. lawmakers are tentatively planning to introduce a one-week stopgap spending bill to avert a government shutdown after the current government funding measures expire on December 11th. AKA, hey, let's just kick the can down the road another week. It's literally like DJ Cat, another one, another extension. <laughs> This is so ridiculous. This comes at the same time as lawmakers are working on getting their omnibus spending package negotiated. Nancy Pelosi talked about this yesterday saying, look, right now, the way we are negotiating is we got to deal with this spending package first, and then we will deal with the stimulus package. So she wants to make sure we are all in agreement on the spending package for the government, which negotiations on this have been very complicated for a few different issues. Donald Trump is threatening to veto the defense bill, which is part of this 12 bill spending package, unless section 230 of the Communication Decency Act is repealed, which I made a video on that. You can type into YouTube, meet Kevin section 230, and you'll see that. It's good to fully understand, has a lot of uh, implications for free speech. Uh, kind of good to, to know about. But anyway, Trump is also demanding more funding for border wall financing, and there is a dispute about whether or not $12.5 billion of veterans affairs spending should be deemed emergency spending or non-emergency spending, because apparently that makes a difference. On top of this, there are currently 300 policy disputes in the 12 bill spending package. This literally means Congress is trying to negotiate 300 issues plus the others that I just mentioned to get a funding bill done. I don't know, I hate to say it, but to me that kind of concerns me. I feel like Congress has been dealing with a handful of issues called stimulus, PPP, unemployment, and checks, and they can't get that done. So when I hear that Congress is negotiating 300 issues in a bill that was supposed to pass next Friday and is now getting kicked down the road uh, just one more week, honestly, I'm not going to hold my breath. Anyway, this insight into kicking the can down the road is consistent with what Nancy Pelosi said, that Congress won't leave until a stimulus package is passed. But quite frankly, she said this at the end of September as well. She told airlines, don't worry, don't lay off people. We're going to get you a standalone airline bill, despite saying she's deathly opposed to standalone bills. And she never got a standalone airline bill done. Now, I don't mean to just bag on Nancy Pelosi here. Mitch McConnell sucks too. Fortunately, the government is, well, at this point, extending certain fiscal cliffs. Student loan forbearance has been extended through January 31st, where students will not have to pay, basically make their payments, uh, until January 31st, and in the meantime, they will pay no interest or accrue no interest. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have delayed foreclosures through the end of January 31st, a one-month extension, but we still have an unemployment cliff coming up on December 26th, when payments for those who were in the program for 39 weeks or for the self-employed or gig workers expire. The eviction ban does still end on December 31st as well, and according to the Eviction Lab via CNBC reported today, despite the eviction ban, more than 80,000 evictions have occurred in September, October, November alone in just 27 cities. Not even 27 states, 27 cities have had 80,000 evictions. They cite inconsistent implementation of the CDC's eviction ban. On COVID, I'm shocked. A month ago, we ran a poll on Twitter asking if cases will be 100,000 soon, 120,000 soon, or 150,000 soon. 23% of us thought 150,000 soon, but yesterday we had 228,767 cases. We were wrong. The co-founder of BioNTech in Germany just joined the world's 250 richest people as its stock has shot up from $29 at the start of the year to $120 per share now. Well, there you have the update, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Consider sharing this if you found it helpful, folks. We'll see you in the next video.